all the secrecy about here. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, pulled that story. Actually, we'll discuss a little bit later on. Uh, but first, uh, to get some other news, uh, joining us as always, Chuck Todd over at the hotline. Chuck, has there been any reaction here in D.C. from uh, Senator Tim Johnson initially? Uh, there hasn't. I mean, there's these AP reports going around about his condition now, and, and there's all, uh, all sorts of... It is interesting how quickly everybody has uh, memorized the, the South Dakota rules uh, when it comes to Senate appointments and all that, just showing you sort of uh, the precarious nature uh, of Senate control and how quickly uh, folks' minds jump here in Washington. So... With that, what else you got? <laughs> well, moving on, I'm going to stick with uh, uh, some Senate news and, and potentially having to do with uh, who stays in the Senate and who doesn't. Lamar Alexander apparently uh, has been considering retirement. And the only reason we know this, because there uh, is an AP story this morning that talks about that the new committee assignments he received, one was to be placed on appropriations, something that's somewhat rare for a first-term senator. He is still a first-term senator, but he is up in 2008, uh, was a way to sort of convince Alexander not to retire. Uh, there had been I say, mild whispers about him retiring, but the only time we've heard him were actually from Democratic sources, so we really didn't put much stock in him. Uh, but a story like this this morning shows that, uh, you know, you, you sat there, he lost the uh, leadership post to Trent Lott, uh, and so there was some thought that he was really only interested uh, in you know, the fact that he got rejected from there, wasn't going to be in leadership, that this was going to be a less interesting job for him. Uh, but uh, this story is making it seem as if uh, Mitch McConnell did whatever, whatever Lamar wanted when it came to uh, committee assignments. He gave them in order to convince him to stay. So these apparently these Alexander retirement rumors were a little more serious than we thought, but it looks like now... He is not going to retire in 08. Obviously, if that opens up, uh, considering how close Democrat Harold Ford came, uh, it would certainly complicate, uh, complicate Republicans' chances of trying to hold, uh, hold the line a little bit and even possibly try to gain back control of the Senate in 08. Moving on to the presidential election, an interesting little law that was signed by Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney. He signed a, a sort of an executive order, an agreement that allows Massachusetts state police to detain illegal aliens that they counter over the course of their normal duties. What this will mean is uh, and it, he signed this agreement and about 30 state troopers are going to get trained by the federal government to do this. Now, what's interesting is we've been watching this very closely. Very carefully, Romney has been trying to uh, come across as a conservative, at least when compared to John McCain. Now, he's had some struggles when it comes to social issues. Very uh, comes across as very pro-gay rights and, and, and on abortion. He's been on both sides of the issue. Uh, but on immigration, this is something uh, that, you know, he wasn't, it's not a position he had taken before, so it isn't going to be an accusation of flip-flopping. And he is tacking to McCain's right. McCain, of course, is not for a wall. Uh, uh, Mitt Romney is for a wall. McCain is a little more closer to the President Bush's position on immigration, which isn't popular with the Republican base. And again, this is what this is about when it comes to presidential. Life. So this is a, well, this, this is maybe a, a gesture that will end up getting wiped off as soon as the new governor comes into Massachusetts, uh, but clearly something that uh, Romney wants to put on his record and try to prove some of his conservative credentials. That said, there's a couple of new polls out, national polls out this morning that test the presidential race, and we're not ones that are into using national polls to, to, to see who's winning. This is about Iowa. Iowa and Iowa when it comes to the to who's leading on, on both sides. That said, uh, two different national polls show that Mitt Romney has a net negative favorable rating national. Now, he's still, a majority of the country still doesn't know who he is. Not that surprising. He's just a one-term governor from Massachusetts. But those that do, ABC, Washington Post, only has, has a 22% uh, favorable rating, but a 24% unfavorable rating. Just to compare John McCain has a 50% favorable rating to 31% who have an unfavorable rating. Rudy Giuliani, 67% favorable rating, 23% unfavorable rating. Uh, and on the Democrat, just to compare to some Democrats, little apples and oranges, Obama has 44-23, Edwards 49-26, and Clinton 56-40. So whatever Romney has done so far, and the fact is half the country does know who he is, and he's got a net negative. That is something that, that has got to scare some Romney folks that maybe his introduction uh, hasn't gone as well uh, as they'd hoped. He has had a rough week or a couple of weeks here and maybe people are paying a little more attention to this race than we realize because 
That's a fairly high, unfavorable rating, Pedro. Chuck Todd, uh, thank you very much for your time. We'll see you in a little bit. You got it. Joining us on your